Sustainably farmed mussels may be the perfect food. They're healthy, delicious, and they filter the water around them as they grow, meaning everyone wins. The problem is they're cheap, they're heavy, and they require a lot of labor, so it's hard to sell them at a profit. One of the ways it's done is by creating mussel farms on giant mussel rafts in the middle of the ocean, which protect the mussels from predators and make harvesting more efficient. So today, I'm out in Portland, Maine to find out how Bangs Island Mussels uses high-tech machinery and organization to turn this highly sustainable protein source into a legitimate business. The day starts at 5 a.m. when the morning team gets in to load the boat up with ice and mussels from the previous day's harvest that need longer to grow. From there, they set out to one of their six sites in Casco Bay to start the long process of getting mussels out of the water and into the hands of chefs across the country. So what is a mussel raft? It's a 40 by 40 foot square that floats in the water year round and we actually hang mussel lines from the raft into the water and the mussels actually grow on those lines. On That's those ropes. these. Right? Each one of these ropes is full of mussels. Okay. So let's take a peek. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. They're kind of heavy. Here we go. So these are almost market ready bangs on mussels. Okay, so obviously like one of the things you guys have to do is make new lines constantly. Yeah. First step in the process is seeding. So we'll take one of these lines, cover it with mussel seed and put it in the water. Bangs Island creates new lines of mussels in two ways. They drop empty lines once a year during spawning season, and more commonly they create lines out of tiny seed mussels and mussels that are too small to be sold. So this is the mussel seeder. So essentially you put little guys in here and we make mussel sausage? It's pretty much that simple. So we've already got an empty line here, which we refer to as a fuzzy rope, because <laughs> it's nice and fuzzy, has a lot of texture. Yeah. That's great stuff that the mussels like to biss onto. It gives them a lot of surface area. Then we'll load on our cotton sock, which is why this is referred to as a socking machine. This will encompass the mussels around the line. All right, let's get them down there. All right, that sounds great. That is so cool. And over time, this cotton will biodegrade. It's basically just a temporary encasing so that the mussels have time to send out their bissel thread, their beards, their roots, if you will. Right. Adhere to that line, cotton biodegrades away, and the mussels take its place. Would you use this for other shellfish as well? For mussels only, because only, mussels only grow the bissel threads, the beards. Is that part of what makes mussels so efficient to grow? Absolutely. The whole system is designed to have the mussels hold themselves on the line, so it becomes very efficient. You can do a lot of quantity in a small space in a short time. Pinch it off. It really is sausage. <laughs> Absolutely. And then we let it go. This is what takes mussel farming to the next level. It's a way to control our density. It's a way to create consistent sizing throughout the year, which is what we try to strive for. All right, so this is the moment we've been waiting for. We're going to pull some mussels out of the water. Yes, we are. So we're taking our slide right now off the boat. We're going to set it up between the raft and the boat. So we have a nice, smooth platform right. to haul the mussel lines from the raft onto the boat. So the first step is clip the hauling line to the mussel line so you don't lose the line, and then you untie it from the raft and let it all fall. It's hauled up just like that. We got mussels! Yeah. This is almost exactly what we want to see. We want to see a lot of mussels that are the same size and big. So this is our ideal mussel size for Bangs Island mussels. So you can sort of see yeah. the difference here. Like big mussel, little mussel. These ones are too small. These will go back in the water. Right, so this mussel will go back in the cedar that we've already seen. Absolutely, and it'll, it'll grow to be harvested another day. So what else is going on the rope? Each mussel line is like its own little ecosystem. So they, these have been hanging out in the water. These have been growing for two years or over two years. So not only do we have some really fantastic big ass mussels, sorry, right. big mussels on here. Big ass mussels is fine. All right, but we also have uh, the other organisms that have been growing along with it. So we have some ascidians, also known as sea squirts, barnacles, there are some algae. Right. There's a lot of things that grow in the water, so you never get like a perfectly clean mussel. Right. That's why all this gear is important. It makes it nice and clean and pretty and ready for market. All right, so I'm gonna turn this on. The hauler's gonna spin. The mussels are gonna come up. And if you want, you can help sort of push them off the line. So you want to push even before they get to the stripper. Gotcha. It just helps. Here we go. 
Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was the last one. That was it. You did a great job, though. Nice job. Okay. This is what we start with. This is the raw product. There's all kinds of mud. Yeah, all kinds of sea squirts, small muscles. And then we have all this fancy gear to help us make nice, clean, market-ready muscles at the end of the day. All the weird stuff that's going on here kind of makes me feel like there's more earth and life in the muscles. It's a dynamic environment. It's uh, uh, full of life, exactly. You know what I mean? If there was not a lot growing on these muscles, there probably wouldn't be growing very good muscles. So it goes up the conveyor belt. All this stuff is specifically built for our farm. And then it feeds into the declumper, which is as simple as it sounds. It's a, a machine that declumps muscles, breaks up the clumps. And that's the result, individual muscles. And the idea is they're all broken up and clean but the muscles themselves aren't broken. This is our vibrating size grater. So obviously it vibrates and <laughs> moves the muscles along and grades them by size. So the small ones, the seed falls through and the market size muscles we put into these insulated bins. So the, whatever falls through here, we're putting back in the water in our, in our sausage. Yep, we're gonna sock them back down in the sausage, exactly. So like a typical day on the boat is you come out, you say, I need 10 bins or I need 20 bins. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, today we need probably 10 of these and another 10 totes. It's, it's a volume game with muscles. Because they don't cost a lot, you have to do a lot of them. So we really need all this automation and this crew to be able to do the volume that, that works for our business, you know, to make a business out of it. Can you actually eat them in this stage? Yeah, you want to eat some? Yeah, I already eat one. Yeah, yeah, that's good, okay. So you basically take it. Yeah. And you slide it in. You kind of have to cut the muscle in half as you do it. Then you can open it up. <laughs> kind of messy. There we go. Yeah. It's kind of like a richer, more briny oyster. Exactly, like fattier, creamier, right? Yeah. That's really good. Yeah, they're it's, really it's good. It's probably a pain in the ass for a restaurant to do that, but I guess they could, yeah. I guess they could do that. They could. It's just like when you cook them, they open and they're like eating. Perfect, yeah, this exactly. Is not, this isn't as inviting. Exactly. So we've still got a lot to do today. We're halfway, we're halfway there. It's time to go back inside and process these muscles to get them out of here. Absolutely. From here, the team brings the day's haul back to the processing facility where they have to take the beards off, polish and pack the muscles for distribution using another line of super high-tech machinery. Okay, so this is the final processing where we take the beards off, inspect, pack, bag, weigh, and ship. Let's clean some muscles. Yeah, load it in. All the way, nice. Well done. That's really satisfying. Let's go. <laughs> Yep. Okay, so from here, the muscles are just being loaded through this hopper. This, this is just transfer, right? This isn't actually doing anything? Exactly, yep. Just and transfer onto the conveyor. And the first step in this process is debissing. Yep. It's actually conceptually pretty simple. There's a series of rods that have teeth, and they spin against each other, and they grab the bissel threads and clip it off. It makes all the difference in the world. I mean, we could not do this by hand at all. It just yeah. does, does not work. This is the beard separated from the muscle. It's just all kinds of fibrous stuff in there. The beards of a thousand wizards. That's right. So once they've been debissed or debearded, they flow down onto the inspection conveyor where we have several people standing there on either side, picking through all the muscles to make sure only the best get through to our customers. So it takes a lot of work to do this step. That'd be really diligent and focused. So we're looking for a few things. We're looking for anything that's cracked, broken, anything that's dead or open, and then anything that's too ugly, right? I love conveyor belts so much. I mean, it makes all the difference in the world. Can you imagine doing all these steps without any conveyors in between them? The beginning of the company, we did that, and the, we took the place of a conveyor by shoveling. We would shovel all the muscles in between the machines. So you were much slower. Yeah, way slower. The muscles, after they've been inspected, fall on the table. We'll do a final hand grade to weed out any sub-market size. They'll fall through the grates and be uh, reseeded later. And it can't take too long because we have several thousand pounds to get through. 
All right, you're saying I was being slow. Yeah, too slow, too slow. So this is a pretty fancy looking piece of machinery here. Yeah. So this is the automatic bagger weigher conveyor. Okay. Muscles go into the hopper, then they come up the belts. Two belts on this conveyor, one for the big, one for the little. So this is the gross weight. So it fills a lot fast. And then this is the fine adjustment, which, you know, fine tunes the actual weight. To load up the bag right here and then release it with this bar and the appropriate amount of muscles falls in the bag. Thank you. Should we go cook up some muscles? Yeah, let's do it. Wine, butter, plenty of butter. Shallots, garlic, simple, classic. So yeah, we have some beautiful Bangs Island mussels right here. You'll notice they're larger than average size. What you don't see right now and you will see soon is the huge meat yield. And that's a tribute to the way we grow the mussels, but also um, the sites that we have. They're just very special. Oh, look at that. Maybe they're Okay, hot. so this is what you're looking for. You want, you want the meat pulled away from the shell like this. Absolutely. These are aliens. These are monsters. Cheers. Cheers. All right. Mm. Yeah, I think that's just the best muscle I've ever had. That's amazing. Ooh. That's sweet. Yeah, it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, I, I can't imagine how you would eat something like this, especially coming from you guys, and not see that you're just, that it's just such a, like a good thing for the world, and it's delicious. I couldn't agree more. Why? <laughs> Thank you so much for, for having us today, touring us around. It's my pleasure. Thanks for joining us. So these muscles have been declumped. I can't tell you how much declump sounds like Yiddish. <laughs> no, okay, yeah. Ah, they're declumped. They're declumped, yeah. What happened to them? He was declumped. <laughs> I love it.